Hey, it's Don, the auction professor here. Today, I've got to ship something. I get questions all the time on how to uh, ship fragile things. This is an 1890s stained glass window that I personally yanked off of a door at an estate sale. Obviously, it wasn't listed with a price on or anything. There was four of these. This is the only one that wasn't damaged. They were going to trash and remodel the house after it was sold, from what I understand. I got it for a couple of bucks, and we are going to wrap it today. I wrap all these things the same way. I usually start by wrapping them in just cellophane, and you can buy these in bulk like this if you want. Um, I have tons of these. I do this with glass or picture frames. If this is a picture frame, I would do it a little differently, um, which I'll show you as well in another one. In fact, this one's empty, so we'll just move straight on to this one here. I yank that off. I wrap it up this way and tape it. That way it's tight to start with. It's always better to start with a tightly set up uh, item. This way it's not going to be bouncing around or anything like that. Obviously we've got a ton of other stuff to wrap around it. Something like this will probably take me 10 minutes or so to wrap. I'm spending a lot more time because I'm showing you, but uh, usually it'll take about 10 minutes. Just be careful while you're wrapping it. You don't want to break it beforehand. And I'll wrap it quite a few times this way. We're going to tape it also. So, And when you get it up like this, I literally just fold the edges over. If this was bigger than this, you could have just wrapped up uh, the Reynolds wrap or whatever you're using, uh, packing tape wrap, whatever, around it. I do that so obviously the tape doesn't stick to it. Kind of get it as tight as you can. And then I do it the other direction. Again, I've shown these tape dispensers. If you're sitting down or something, man, you don't even have to touch this thing. As you saw, I had some big, long pieces coming out. It's it's ton time better than the handheld thing that I used to use. I also do the edges by hand and tighten those. Try and pull it as tight as you can to make sure that the paint isn't going to be able to loosen up in shipment. <laughs> I'm going to keep this because we're going to use it again in just a couple minutes here. Now, this stuff you can go to a box manufacturer and get by like 400 foot rolls of this, just oddball shapes, kind of like end cuts for bubble wrap. Just random assortment sections of bubble wrap, which I get that way too. Um, or you can go to like a home supply store. This is used for uh, sound deadening as well similar stuff. It, it may be a little more expensive if you can't find it locally. This is the cheapo packing stuff. They would have cut it or used it for dishes, but I buy it in end cuts or big huge rolls of it when we're doing stuff like this because it's much cheaper when you do it that way. So this is the next up. I just grabbed a few sheets of it just so I can get it all here. Just figure out what's the best bet for size of the item. We're going to wrap it up like that too. I just set it in the center. We're going to put it on there tight. And part of the reason we wrapped it and did all the tape, because then these stick much better. And I'll just stick it on here for just a second. We're going to envelope it up in between here. Any dust particles or anything like that that may have fallen off of this, um, literally, I'll make sure they're not on my table. I don't like to scratch it all up. And then it's literally going to be like it's almost a Christmas present. Now we'll come back in in just a second and tape it. Now again, this is it's a 10 minute ordeal is what it takes to wrap this. I got 80 bucks out of it, uh, profit wise about 70 bucks. I don't mind spending 10 minutes for 70 bucks. This was a quick, easy one. I was already there. I already made a ton of money from where I purchased this. It was up for 
maybe three days, maybe at the most. Now I'm going to fix this. fix this here too. Okay, so that's the first one. I'm just going to do it one more time, but I'm going to flip it over so that the folded part is down. You can't have enough of this, in all honesty. And doing it tight with this stuff, um, it's not like wrapping it just in a box. I know this may seem like overkill to some people, but I haven't had one damaged yet. Same thing on the other side. Let's just get it a little better. Hold it on the edges. <clears throat> what you want is a pocket around it of like soft material. So if it bumps into it, it's not gonna hurt this. It's so much easier to do it this way or a similar way when you have a glass frame with a wooden back. That's a totally different aspect. It just depends on what you're wrapping. This is a loose piece of glass, or multiple pieces of glass, I should say. So on this, I'm just gonna wrap it carefully. Again, this is literally 10 minutes if I'm doing this by myself, just sitting here not worrying about anything. You're not going for fancy or looks or anything like that. You're going for safety, so don't worry about what it looks like. <clears throat> and I got this here, which is a eBay box. Um, it's literally what I get my eBay boxes in for shipment. I'm gonna cut this up so I can wrap it around it too. So we'll just need to figure out at this point In fact, we're going to run it this way I usually do this somewhere else because I got a big open area in front of a movie screen. But we'll find a good spot. In fact, it's almost perfect size on this, honestly. Once I figure out how we're going to wrap it, again, I, I keep big boxes all the time. Uh, or I can put together multiple 14 inch cubes or 16 inch cubes to make even bigger boxes. So we're just going to. Take a knife and just score it. And this is corrugated, so it's got a line you can just follow right along. You don't have to do anything fancy. And we've got a fold right there like that. Same thing, you've kind of estimated here. And I make boxes like this for almost anything I have. Like when I send out vintage board games, I literally wrap them and make just a custom box. It literally takes a minute, and I can almost always use a 14-inch or a 16-inch cube on that one. So we're going to have to cut. I'm cutting down to get make some flaps on the side. Same thing on these flaps. I'm just going to score 
So I've got a pocket for this to sit in. And I did the same thing over here, or I will do the same thing. And these are literally custom boxes, one off at a time. But this is the only way to get these safely and not have to worry about anything. Again, I don't mind spending 10 or so minutes to do one of these. If I was whizzing this up myself, I would have, you know, been halfway through it already. So then we're just going to go ahead and again, tip it this way. In fact, we can... We're just cutting off some more flap. Now, sometimes it's much easier with some boxes. You won't have to cut all this stuff up. But again, I don't mind doing this. I kind of like making boxes, honestly. And then we're going to see where it falls. So then we can just cut off the extra. I'm going to double box this. Okay, so let me just show you where we got. Let me just finish it off here. So right now it's totally protected around this way. I double box these. I'm gonna wrap that bubble wrap around this and then just cut another box just like I did for this one to wrap around this one. I don't worry as much of it hitting on the bottoms or the tops. It's gonna be double cardboard with the new one that I wrap around this. The glass structure, the face or the back, are where you're gonna worry about taking a hit. It's already got padding, so chances are if it takes a hit, it can move around in there. Now, I've left a pocket. There's literally a pocket, as you can see. There's a little extra space, so this can move around just a minuscule amount. I probably am only gonna put a couple more pieces of tape, and then, as we said, we'll bubble wrap it. Now, if I was doing this where I normally do it and how I normally do it, um, I wouldn't even tape it. I'm just showing you for reference here. Then we've got the bubble wrap. I'm going to wrap it around it. Now, this is the standard size I usually get, so I already knew that I'd be okay with this style of bubble. I randomly grabbed a piece as well, so this is what I'm going to do with the piece here. Again, 10 minutes is no exaggeration. That's honestly about what it takes me to do this. I whip it up. I'm usually standing up, and I can just roll with this really easily. I'm just taping it on so the bubble wrap's not going to slip. And then I do one more thing. And I'm going to wrap this. It's going to encase this as well. Again, I, I'd rather overkill it and spend the extra 10 minutes or so to make sure it's wrapped correctly. Even if it took me 15 minutes, I'm okay with that. I have, I take pride in wrapping stuff up and making sure it gets there. And with the roll, I never use it in a box or anything like that. You can buy these in bulk. And then it's just a matter of doing this. There's a handle for some of these if you get the big thick ones, but... I can get this cheaper stuff, this like uh, homemade or home version of it, cheaper than I can get the industrial. And ply-wise, it's the same ply, so I wasn't going to mess with the time frame on it. This will help protect one of these from getting snagged or something. And literally, I'm just going to do this. And then we're going to wrap it once the other way. Make sure you cover all ends of it. You don't have to do the strand wrap if you don't want, but... I found that it just looks better, feels better, and it usually lasts throughout the shipment. And then we can literally come back in here and just run some tape.
Sometimes that happens with a large piece, but no big deal. I'll fix it. Okay, so this is the thing. All now I am going to do is just wrap another box around it, and that's it. This, I couldn't sit on this or anything at this point, but it's pretty darn sturdy. I mean, I'm not going to worry about this thing getting damaged or anything like that. And if I've measured right, this box will fill in the last of it. There'll be just enough, and I'll be rid of this box as well. So we're just going to match it up to the side. Same thing, score it. Run it along the corrugated line. And you can literally see it way down the line. So fold it. And then I cut on the edges. Yeah, let's cut it right there. And when you do it on the last one too, you can literally custom it to the size of the box. And I'm going to tape this one. Up. Just to make it easier. Again, if I'm on the floor or doing it in my big area, I've got an eight foot table I can use too. It's sometimes easier than sitting here at a table trying to show you. And then I'm just going to fold this one here. I'm literally making a pocket. Just be careful. I use a knife. Um, I've done this for 10 years. A knife is much safer than using a, a, like a razor blade or something along that line. And just a piece to hold it in place. And I don't mind if I tape it to the item. It doesn't bother me at all. I know it's going to get there and it's going to be safe. So, And then it's just a matter of folding it from here. Now we're going to cut this off here. I don't really need to yet, but we're going to do it. I literally do this same method for anything big, anything. And sometimes this is about the only kind of boxes, you know, this one I obviously got from eBay, but this size or bigger, I'll go and get free boxes, maybe from a dumpster or something. It's the only time I do this, or I'll ask for at the uh, appliance stores. Go to an appliance store if you want a huge piece of cardboard. Usually they'll just give them to you because they've got to recycle them, but refrigerators and a lot of those items you see on the floor came in something, a piece of cardboard. So I always ask those places first. If you run out of places like that, you can buy huge sheets of just square sheets of cardboard and cut them any way you want. And as I wrap it up and roll this thing up, it's going to build up on the edges anyway. So literally, this is what I do. And I'm just going to roll it all out through this rest of this cardboard here. And I'm overkilling it with tape today just to show you. When I'm doing this, I just fold it. And I'm usually using my body to push it down so it's not going to unroll on me. And again, you got to cut a few of these. Now, this one here, I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut it like this so I can fold in the rest of this. And we're going to fold this end this way, too. And you can tape it if you want. Again, this is, I'm making 70 bucks on this. So, you know, it's not that big of an ordeal for me. I'm taking the time to show you. This is how custom boxes are made in like the industrial world, but they're they're doing so many of them and they've got it down to a science if it's a specific piece of equipment that it's not that big of an ordeal. So, and again, I said we're gonna go this way. When you get enough of the cardboard folded, you don't have to score it. You can just literally do this. That's one side and boom. So as you see, it's a pretty sturdy box. I can. I can push on this. It's not even budging on the inside box. So this is going to get there 100% in good condition.
And then all we're going to do is we're going to do another cut here. Now you can do this several different ways. I'm going to actually, let's cut it this way. Okay, so I cut it here and then down here so I can fold this end in as well. And that way all of my edges are covered. And then I'm just going to shorten this. Fold this, and then at the end, all I've got to do is, in fact, this one I might score. Let's make this a tight one. This is the outside of the box. This is what's going to be in the mail. I don't care if it takes half a roll of tape. These rolls of tape I got, I can buy 36 rolls of this tape that I've got in here for around $23 shipped. Let's just put a bigger piece on here. Once it's all sealed, you'll be able to just zip it up real quick and finish it off. We're going to do the same thing here. So I did the same thing. Let me move this out of the way so you can see it. I cut it so this is now another flap. Fold this in. Remove a little bit of this. Put that down. And we're going to do the same thing. We'll score... And that is literally it. So let me zip some tape on here. One key on putting tape on this, don't just tape over that one little area with one piece of tape. You can get a three inch dispenser of this too and do three inches as well. I have one, I just don't feel like digging it out. I guess I'm being a little lazy today. But it's the exact same type of dispenser. It's a tabletop three inch. This is a tabletop two inch. I have links to this exact dispenser. I promise you if you're sitting at a table doing this or something and it stuff's all there, this will cut your time down in like half of do using tape conventionally. So now I'm just going to put, I always make sure it's on there good, but I'm just going to put a couple more around the edges up this way and we're going to do it this way. We'll just stay, hold it up here. I do overkill, so I'm going to do this. This prevents the tape from rolling up or anything on the edges. It's got a, a blocking point. And then we're just going to do the other end of this.
Okay, so this is it. This is the whole thing. It's all wrapped. It's, I would say, pretty darn sturdy. It doesn't weigh very much at all. It's not a huge, massive box. But the key when you do something like this is you've got to wrap it tight first, the item, so it's not going to move any little parts in there or anything like that. You protect it with thin stuff first. You don't want to put the bubble wrap directly around it because it has room to move in that compartment. So what you do is you literally will then wrap it with like a foam like I did. If you don't have the foam, you can use around 10 sheets of newspaper over every part of it. it may take 10 on half of it and 10 on the other. Tape it all around. If you don't have the foam, the foam is readily available. If you do a lot of stuff like this, the foam will honestly save you a lot of time and energy and effort. Again, this honestly takes me max 10 minutes to do, maybe even like six or eight if I'm really whizzing on. I've got a couple of these. Once the foam is on there, I did a first box. I wrapped it around with cardboard with a double layer. As you saw, I folded it, had the edges folded. Then I bubble wrapped it. So the bubble, when you push on it now, all you're feeling is the bubble wrap itself. So it's gonna move with the inside box. It's got like a floating box in here. I thought I would show you real quick. I'm going to cover up the information here. But uh, this is also what I do. You can see the box. On both sides, it has the same uh, fragile. I also have this end up on the top here. So they'll have to stick it like this. If it's not, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. It's wrapped very well. But that's just an added extra bonus to this. This weighed six and three quarters pounds. It costs fourteen dollars and ninety cents to ship this priority. Um, where is it going to? And it's going to Missouri, so it's a ways away from me. That's still very reasonable. I got the size down. It's four inches by um, thirty-four by twelve. So that's really not that bad. Most people overestimate, make some big massive box for something that really doesn't need it. So anyway, that's about it. If you want to see how I pack a big, and I'm talking a, it's 24 by 36 or maybe even a little bigger picture frame with glass in it, make a comment down below. Um, I've got one going off this week and I'm just waiting for payment on it. So uh, once the payment comes in, I'm going to wrap it. If nobody really cares to see it and this really answers your question, I won't do a video on it. So if you want a video to see how to ship picture frames, let me know and I will put one together for you. Hopefully that gave you some ideas. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.